Marvels is out in full swing now, and this is going to be my spoiler-filled review for the Marvels. I saw it again. I may have liked it a little bit more. Still not 100% sure, but I'm going to talk about spoilers for the Marvels. So if you haven't seen the Marvels and you don't want to be spoiled, I have a spoiler-free video you can check out right here. I'll leave the link for that at the end as well. This is full-blown spoilers, so there's not really much to spoil with the Marvels, mostly just the villain plan, the mid credit scene, the ending. There's really not much, but there are some things I want to talk about, so let's get right to it. <laughs> Jar Ben's probably the one I want to talk about the most. I still didn't like her on rewatch. Uh, I, you know, I sympathized with her a little bit, but the movie doesn't really leave you all that much room to sympathize with her. I think I still think she's my least favorite Marvel villain. The thing is, is that she harnesses the power of the Quantum Band. She finds one, and Kamala Khan has the other. So she harnesses the power of that Quantum Band. She uses the Quantum Band. She pairs it with her fucking staff that's just Ronin's hammer also known as the universal weapon we gotta get away from this Ronin stuff and then uses that power to create jump points in space essentially what's happening what she's really pissed about is that she's the leader of the Kree Captain Marvel destroyed the supreme intelligence and left her planet Hala in complete disarray there's no air there's no water there's no sunlight. They don't have any natural resources. So what's she going to do? She's going to create all these jump points and take all these different resources from all these different planets and just suck them into Hala so that Hala can actually live again and breathe again and feel like it's actually a habitable planet. Okay. I don't know. I think there could have been more that could have been done with her. I just didn't find her all that appealing or interesting all that much. Like, I, I, I like the scene that she's there and she witnesses Captain Marvel destroy the Supreme Intelligence. That's fine. But like, what made her the leader of the Kree? Like, what made her so important that she had to be the one to lead the Kree? I just didn't find her all that imposing or intimidating. It's almost like they had to give her the hammer to make her more intimidating. And she wasn't. You know, I get that Zawe Ashton was directed to use her physicality as a strength she arrives in the physicality but just as like a figure that's just standing there you know she doesn't do it for me she lacks a lot of the presence the character lacks a lot of development it's just hey i'm a bad guy marvel baddie doing marvel baddie things for just the most generic reasons possible <laughs> Power switching. How did the power switching work? Well, I like the power switching a lot. And I know that there's going to be discrepancies here because everybody's going to be like, oh, but they're supposed to switch when they use their powers, but they're not switching when they use their powers here. Oh, it's only uh, when the plot calls for it. And it's not. You got to watch it carefully because it says when they use their powers in conjunction with each other, when they use their powers simultaneously, they have to use their powers at the same time in order for them to switch. Like you could have Kamala Khan and Carol using their powers at the same time without Monica using her powers, but Mo that means that Kamala and Carol would switch places, or you could have Carol and Monica using their powers at the same time, and they would switch places, and Kamala would just stay where she is. It actually made for some creative, really fun action sequences, just seeing them switch in the middle of a fight to different locations or to the spot that the previous one was at. That was really fun. It made the action a little bit more creative. And I got to give Marvel credit for that. I feel like sometimes they don't get enough credit for being a bit more creative. Instead, they just get criticized for doing the same thing, which I get, or just doing something completely stupid or out of the blue, which I'm about to talk about now. <laughs> Because we get to Aladna. Yeah, this is a different ass planet for Marvel. I don't know. This cosmic side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I feel like it's just all kind of blending together. Like, I feel like Aladna could be a place in Thor or Guardians of the Galaxy or part of the quantum realm and quantum mania. But Aladna is funny because it just looks like it's off like the coast of Greece. <laughs> it's a, like it doesn't look like a planet at all it's just like yeah they film that in like italy or greece or something and it's just a coastal town but uh this place is a little weird i understand if people are going to be off put by this place because this entire planet revolves around singing 
That's the language. Carol even makes a joke saying they don't have to sing, they can talk. They're bilingual or something, which I thought was funny. Um, but yeah, so the inhabitants of this planet sing. And there's about a maybe three minute sequence where you see them singing. Here's my thing. If this was Taika Waititi directing a Thor movie, he would have doubled down on that. He would have been like, no, but everybody's going to love this. So just keep doing it throughout the entire movie. He would have brought those people back. Here, it's almost like it's a trial and error thing, or it's like a trial run to see if people will like it. And then it's immediately just kind of gone because they know that people probably won't like it. So it's just like, we'll put this in here. We will we'll try it. But if people don't like it, we won't come back to it. How about that? That's how that section felt to me. I do love that action scene though. And they have like all the people of Aladdin getting up ready to ready to fight all the Kree and Darben comes through and there's that really cool fight it's a really cool action scene although it did remind me of the action scene in Thor the Dark World on Asgard that's what I thought I was just like this kind of feels like Asgard is it just me okay yeah it's just me huh I'm the only one that remembers the Dark World I don't even like the Dark World all that much <laughs> I do like finding out how they are able to switch powers though and that has to do with quantum entanglements it's not really expanded upon but for what the movie's going for i know people are going to say it doesn't have much of a plot it doesn't have much of a plot it's a very small scale plot for a short brief movie which yeah i don't think the story here really extends past an hour and 45 minutes which is the runtime of this movie but, I mean, for what they're going for, it works. I don't need something to be over-explained, even though there are big moments of exposition in this movie explaining everything to you about quantum entanglement and how their powers are entangled and all that. I don't think any of, like, the lore surrounding the quantum bands or the universal weapon, I don't think any of that overstays its welcome i think it's the right amount of time dedicated to it maybe it could have been a little bit longer maybe we could have had a few extra scenes here and there but for the most part you don't really need a giant overexposure to a story like this i think it works perfectly fine for a smaller scale story for what they're going for with this movie <laughs> Let's talk about the Flurkins. Uh, the Flurkins are funny in this movie. <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of cats running around towards the end. The use of them is funny. And that's the thing. The humor here, especially in this scene, because I feel like people will just be like, oh, no, this is just for comedy, comedy's sake. Maybe. See, I think something like having the Flurkins slurp up everybody so that it's easier to transport everybody off the transport vessels at the end. I think doing something like that is better than having drink the ooze or the screaming goats from Love and Thunder. To me, I think the comedy was oversaturated in Love and Thunder. I've really soured on Love and Thunder, by the way. The humor in Quantumania was really, 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 really dry. Like, like Rick and Morty humor. Like, it doesn't work for me here it worked that scene worked for me because i knew well a i knew i wasn't going to be overexposed to it and b i was like this is actually kind of funny <laughs> like i would never think of that in a movie like this i just think it's a funny idea to have the flirt and slurp up everybody and put them in escape pods when everything's just going to shit on the saber station <laughs> Next on the list is the final scene of the movie. Uh, I loved this scene. For anybody saying that this saga is going nowhere, that phases four and five seem like they're just a waste of time, buckle up because this movie sets it all up. Uh, I love Kamala sitting in the shadows as uh, Kate Bishop arrives at her apartment in New York, and it's hilarious. I was not expecting Haley Steinfeld to show up in this movie. I was not expecting Kate Bishop at all, the character. It's really funny, just Kamala sitting there in the shadows, acting like the Nick Fury type, and being like, you think you're the only kid superhero? And Kate Bishop just saying, I'm 23. Like, <laughs> that was really good writing, in my opinion. And and it's it's set up for the Young Avengers because she's like, oh, did you know Ant-Man has a daughter? I'm like, no, don't bring Cassie Lang back here all she's gonna do the whole movie is say but that's setting up the young avengers and then we have to talk about the mid credit scene because towards the end of the movie the multiverse 
is exposed and Monica Rambeau is trying to close the jump point to the multiverse. She gets stuck before Carol can save her. And so now she's stuck in the multiverse. And in the multiverse, she sees her mother, Maria. But Maria is acting a little bit weird. And I picked up on this first. I was like, why is she acting so weird? I'm like, because it's the multiverse. That's why. So I bet in this in this universe, that's not her mother. It turns out it's not. But then you also see a figure go by. And I once I heard the voice, I wasn't spoiled about this. Because this had been leaked and people have known about it forever. That Beast from X-Men is in this scene. I didn't get spoiled. I freaked out like a uh, nerdy fanboy. And uh, Kelsey Grammer as Beast shows up and you see a giant X on a door and he mentions Charles Xavier. So that's our introduction to the X-Men. Oh yeah, this is going to be so exciting. I'm interested to see how they're going to do the X-Men in this universe. Everybody was just like, well, if they're going to do mutants, like how are mutants going to come in if they've been here all along? But I'm uh, uh, pretty sure there already is a mutant. I forget. Is it Kamala? No, I don't think so. I already know somebody's a mutant. I don't know. I know that there's already a mutant in here or they're retconning it or something. I don't know. But hey, uh, but like if you're going to explain how mutants can get into this universe, why not just use the multiverse? And I think that that's what they're going to do. So it's going to be interesting to see how the X-Men come into play, what's going to happen with Monica Rambo, what's going to happen with Maria Rambo. Honestly, guys, I just think that this movie, despite being disposable and despite being very scattershot and all over the place, I do enjoy it. And I think I had a little bit more fun with it on rewatch. This is the one where I could see people being like, yeah, it's a mess, but at the same time, like, it's fun. Three leads have really good chemistry. And I think that that's really going to be the glue that holds this movie together. So that's my spoiler review for the Marvels. Let me know what you think of the Marvels in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.